So whole numbers begins with zero. It's the counting numbers plus the zero added to that. So natural numbers, that's what we call them, n, are the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, all the way to infinity. And if you add zero to that list, we have what we call whole numbers. Our book, I think, calls them H here instead of N. And these are all the counting numbers plus zero. So notice we are not going to be dealing with negative numbers for a while, not in this chapter at least. We are not going to be dealing with decimal values, not in this chapter. That's the next chapter. So this chapter deals with the whole numbers only. First question is how do you read them? How do you read whole numbers? And each digit, so when you write a number like 29764, each digit has a weight. You and I, we use base 10. When we count, our number system is known as base 10. So really, the weight of this location is 10 to the power of 0. And anything to the 0 power is 1. That's known as the 1's unit. So the weight of this, that's 4 1's. The weight of this, that's 10 to the 1. What's 10 to the 1? That's a 10. This digit is known as the 10's digit. The weight of this, we'll get to the square, 10 square, which is what? A hundred. We didn't talk about squares yet. That location is known as the hundreds, and so forth. The next one is 10 to the third, which is a thousand. So when you look at our number system, it's broken down like this. The first one is known the ones, the tens, then the hundreds. And what comes after that? Thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. What comes after hundred thousand? Million. million. Ten millions, hundred millions. And what comes after that? Billions. Ten billions, hundred billions, trillions. Ten trillions, hundred trillions. Some of the big numbers, you hear about them, but you and I don't deal with them really. But you might hear Bill Gates is worth 70 billion dollars. That's what Bill Gates is worth, somewhere around 70 billion. What does that mean, 70 billion? That's how much money he is worth. Seventy billion dollars. Mind-boggling. The guy is like 50 years old. <laughs> if he lives to be 100 years old, even if he doesn't make any more money, just that number, if you divide that by 50, it tells you how many billions per year he can spend. Notice I can't even type on my calculator. It's too big. You can't spend a billion in a year. I can put in scientific notation here. Divided by 50 years. He can spend that much a year without running out of money. Divided by 365 days a year, he can spend about 3.8 million a day. Divided by 24, he can spend about 159,000 an hour. Divided by 60, he can spend 2,000, uh, is that twenty six uh, two thousand six hundred and sixty three dollars a minute? A minute divided by sixty every second he can spend about forty four bucks a second for the rest of his life, day, night, evening, anytime, before that money runs out. I like some. Yep. Bigger than that, trillions you hear about the US deficit, how much we owe China. We owe them nineteen Trillion dollars. Trillion. And counting every day. Yep. How come they don't just like fight us? 
Well, there's other ways to get your money back. You make a deal. You don't just go and kill people. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so 19, he wants to fight. Go to war already over that. <laughs> 19 trillion. That's a big number. Well, I'll give you, I'll make it simpler for you. How many people live in the USA? What's the population of the USA? About 300 million. So I solved the problem for them. I told Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, I said, guys, I can solve the deficit for you. All we have to do, have each one of us give the government, I'll tell you now, divided by three mil uh, 300 million, if each one of us can give the government $63,333, we can solve that deficit today. So if you have family, husband, wife, and three kids, times five, you have to give them about $316,666. And that deficit is solved. See? More than one year. Almost, yep. No, so work free. So we deal with big numbers. We deal with trillions. We deal with billions. We hear them. But again, you and I, when you go to look at your checking account, you're not going to see millions and billions and trillions. You'll see pennies and, uh, <laughs> and dollars there, ones and tens. Okay. So you're going to get some questions. You probably saw that on the homework. We asked you the place value. What is the place value for the number eight here? Let's look at the number eight. On my where my hand is, that's in the thousand. Can you see it? The number eight. Can you see in the second one? Yeah, hundred thousand. That's a hundred thousand. The number eight here is what? What is it? No, not hundred. Ten millions. Ten. And you can also do the number, like if you have a number written like this in standard form, if you want to read that number, see that number? We break them into groups of threes. So that's what? 1,234,056. Same thing with this one. This will be what? 8 billion. 376,052. So you're going to get some questions like these back and forth to take a number from here, the blue, to that standard notation. That's called expanded notation. That's standard to go from standard to expanded, expanded to standard. As long as you know the weight of each digit, you're going to be fine. I'm just getting to the good stuff here. Rounding numbers. What's the rule for rounding numbers? Anyone? Well, it doesn't matter here's what. I mean, if you're looking at a digit, how do you round? You go up if it's over five. It's five or more, you go up. And they're five, you turn it to a zero. So round to nearest 10 nearest 100 nearest when it said nearest 10 how many digits are we talking about here Two. nearest 10 nearest 100 nearest thousand nearest says you have four zeros here three zeros why let's take a number and see how that is let's have the number 51,760 and the question round, I'll do it twice, to nearest thousand. That's question A. Question B, round to nearest the same number. Ten thousand. So let's look at the nearest thousand. Let me write the number down. Five, one, seven, six, zero. Where's the thousand location? Right here, the one, right? That's your thousand. 
You look at this digit. Is that five or more? What? Yeah, no. This one? Yes. Is that five or more? We add one to this. So when you add one to that, that'll be what? 52. 52 and three zeros. So when you do nearest thousand, you're gonna have three zeros at the end. 10,000, you're gonna have four zeros. Again, let's look at the 10,000, same number. Five, one, seven, six, zero. Where's the 10,000? Right here. Is that five or more? So that'll be what? 50,000. Notice nearest 10,000, how many zeros you have to the right of it? Four. Nearest 1,000, how many zeros to the right? Three. If I said round, question C here, two nearest 100. Again, take that number, which is 51760. Where's the 100 location? Six. Right here. That's the 100. Oh. You look at that number. Is that number 5 or more? Oh, yes. Add 1 to that. That will be what? 51800. Zero, zero. That 76 becomes 80. You're closer to 80 than 70. So to round again, here's the rules. Underline the place to which you are rounding. Instead of underlining, I'll put an arrow pointing on it. Well, it doesn't make a difference. Look at the digit to the right, directly to the right. If that digit is five or more, we add one to that underline number, or the one with the arrow on top of it, add one to that. If it's less than five, leave it alone don't add anything to it replace all the digits to the right of that ender line with zeros so that's the process we use huh sure straight ahead Let's have you round a few numbers for me here. You try it. I'll give you a few minutes, 30 seconds apiece maybe. Here's the number. Seven, nine, six, three, zero. Maybe I'll do underline instead of arrow. First question, round to nearest thousand. And the next question, round to nearest hundred. Let's look at nearest thousand. Hopefully you have enough time. Seven, nine, six, three, zero. Our book said underline the digit you want to round to. Nearest thousand, that's this one, the nine. There's the underline. Look at the digit to the right of that. That's this one. Is that five or more? We add one to this one. When you add one to 79, what are you gonna have? 80. 80 and change the rest of them to zeros after that. Nearest hundred, again, the same thing. The hundred location is right here. Is that number five or more? Nope. nope. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Seven, nine, six, and the rest of the numbers will be zeros. Seventy-nine, six hundred.
That's section 1.1 in our book. That's it. Any questions on it? The first chapter is really quick, short sections, basic stuff, doesn't take long. You're going to see the next section, how do you add and subtract whole numbers.